Hello, I'm Jeff Zwerink, and thank you for joining us today. I'm excited because we have Dr. Leslie Wickman, and we're going to get to know a little bit of her story, how she came to know Christ, and what God has done through her life. Leslie, it's great to have you here today. Great to be here, Jeff. So did you grow up in a Christian home, come to Christ early, later in life? How did it all yeah, start? Yeah, yeah. So for me, I did. I grew up in a Christian home. Um, you know, basically went to church and Sunday school every weekend. Um, and I remember when I was seven years old in Sunday school, uh, our pastor at the church came in and, and basically shared the gospel message. And mm -hmm. I decided then and there that that's what I wanted for my life. So... That's so me. so fairly early in life, is that something that just kind of made pretty dramatic changes right away, slower? How did it play out for me? Well, that? you know, because of the fact I grew up in the Christian home, even before that quote-unquote conversion experience, mm -hmm. um, I had felt close to God and mm. had prayed and felt like I had already had this kind of uh, relationship starting prior to that point, right. but it was kind of more of an elect intellectual thing. Okay. Uh, when I actually accepted Christ and was like, oh, that's that's what I want, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then from there, actually, just a couple years later, um, I was nine years old and went to Bible camp. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, that was actually a really kind of formative experience for me. Um, <clears throat> throughout the week, um, we had some missionaries that were speaking to the, the entire camp uh, every night, essentially. And I remember just feeling very, very um, uh, deeply called by God to be a missionary when mm. that was going on. And honestly, it was frightening for me. And I was, I was really disturbed about it because, you know, here I am, nine years old. I don't want to leave my family, travel <laughs> halfway around the world and live in right. a, you know, grass hut with a dirt floor, you know. And, and it just sounded like something that, you know, maybe adults do that, but mm -hmm. I just didn't feel prepared, obviously, at nine years old. And so I'd go back to my cabin night after night and literally cry myself to sleep. I was oh, wow. so disturbed about this because it was such a powerful hmm. uh, sense of calling. And I remember after a few nights of that, I, I finally just surrendered. Hmm. And I just said, okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And I remember like it was yesterday, being overcome with this amazing sense of peace, just hmm. flooded through me. And I slept like a baby that night. And wow. ever since then, I've never let go of that. Mm -hmm. And so the way I've tried to live my life is at every fork in the road, just asking God, you know, which way do you want me to go? Uh, and being very open to a call to the literal mission field. Right. Um, and in fact, I've gone on a number of short-term mission trips all, all the time really thinking, you know, God might call me to do this um, long-term hmm. as a vocation. You know, God might call me to stay. And I remember one of the, the last mission trips that I went on was to South Africa with Athletes hmm. in Action Volleyball. Right. And right before I left on the trip, one of my friends said, you need to read this book. And she was referring to The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Okay. And it's basically told in an allegory st style about this shepherd boy in uh, Spain who finds a map to buried treasure at his uh, family's property in Spain, but it takes him to this place in Africa where, um, where he's supposed to go to... Oh, wow. get more information. <laughs> so yeah, kind of a parallel for what I, what I was doing, right? right? And so when he gets to Africa, he discovers another map that directs him back home to Spain okay. to where the actual treasure is buried. All right. And so while I'm on this mission trip to South Africa, I'm seeing what these women are doing with like a, a Bible study prayer time mm -hmm. uh, before the volleyball tournaments took place. And right. And all the while I'm thinking, wow, this is stuff I could do at home, you know, and, and I don't have to be far from home to be a missionary. And so that was kind of the message, I mm -hmm. think, that God was trying to impress upon me was you don't have to be far afield to, to be a missionary. And as time went on, then I realized that my true mission field was this mission field of reconciling science and faith. Well, that's a, that's a fascinating question because it seems like there's just this openness to, okay, God, where are you leading? Yeah. How did that play out where you started connecting with science and faith yeah. and, and go into that field? Exactly. So, so um, 
my dad was an engineer. My mom was a nutritionist. So I kind of grew up with STEM as a normal right. part of life. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> and uh, furthermore, my dad had a telescope growing up. Oh, wow. And so we used to go out and look at the stars and the moon and the planets through his telescope. And I was fascinated with space as a kid. What, what, what was your favorite thing to find or look at? Does anything you, know, you I mean, particularly with, remember? Yes. Um, uh, I was really intrigued by the planets. But because of the, the size of the telescope we were working with, my favorite thing was to look at the moon. Really? Okay. Yeah, because you can see <laughs> some detail. Right, there. okay. You know, like I said, it was a small telescope. Gotcha, okay. And so you could really see some detail in, in the moon. And so I was just really struck by that. And so, you know, anything space just caught, captured my <laughs> attention. And so I was, you know, that kind of... I think that was my early introduction to, you know, what a career in science could be like. And so, um, but you know, not long after that, I encountered my first uh, atheist teacher mm -hmm. in my biology class in junior high. Okay. And that kind of felt like a de derailing at the time because he would basically say, you know, we're going to talk about stuff in here that is going to contradict what you've learned at church and Sunday school. So Really? That openly, he, that openly antagonistic, huh? And so I, you know, here I am 12 years old, and right. I'm like, what do I do with this? You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, everything I'd heard before that was like, yeah, God's the source of all this stuff that we're studying, you know? And, and so... Um, it kind of threw me for a bit of a loop. I just didn't know what to do with it. But w what it did for me kind of educationally was, you know, all my teachers had always encouraged me in math and science because I was good in math and science. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to college, I'm like, I don't know if I can pursue a career mm -hmm. that, in science because I don't know if it's compatible with my faith. And I still hadn't resolved that. And so I actually, I still took a lot of math and science in college, but I majored in poli sci. Interesting. And so it wasn't until, um, you know, I did an internship at the U.S. State Department my senior year. And it was um, at the what was then the Soviet desk okay. of the State Department. I was interested in arms control negotiations and, and whatnot. And, and um, during that time, I realized that I needed to have an advanced degree in order to get anywhere in the State Department. Right. So um, I started applying to grad school in aerospace engineering, coming out of this poli sci <laughs> background. A little you bit know, of an interesting right, uh, exactly. course there. But lo and behold, I got in. Right. And, you know, to this master's program in aerospace engineering at Stanford with, you know, my my undergrad degree in poli sci and so I, I kind of took that as a, a god thing too okay. um, and so um, even even in my master's program though I still w had my eye on going into the State Department and okay. you know, working in international relations and but along the way I got really interested again uh, in the space program and so by the time I, I finished my master's program I started uh, working at Lockheed and right. in various NASA programs, you know, the Hubble Space Telescope, International Space Station. And, you know, there was kind of no looking back at that point in right. terms of, uh, you know, developing a career in political science. So, um, so, so just as a kind of maybe last question here to kind of wrap things up, how did you end up reconciling the, yeah. this tension you have between science and Christianity? Right, so it really was kind of reading everything I could get my hands on about connections between science and faith. And actually, uh, a lot of Hugh's early work um, was really uh, pivotal for me in, in understanding the connections. And it kind of set me on the path to realizing that it's like, oh, there are some ways to, to connect it. And it, it actually isn't even so much as a methodology to connect it, but to realize that God has revealed himself mm. both in scripture as well as in creation. And the, the trick, if you want to call it a trick, is figuring out how those two books of his revelation fit together. And that was really kind of the turning point for me, is to, to realize that God faithfully reveals himself mm. both in his creation as well as in scripture. And, you know, we have to read both of those books for all they're worth to figure out, you know, what is is what the correct interpretation is right. of both books. So well, I, I love hearing that, you know, you're, you're 
what you're describing there very much mirrors the recognition I had. It's like, you know, if God is who he says he is, those are going to agree. Exactly. It's just kind of a matter of how do you do it. Exactly. So, if there's one thing, uh, as people are listening to your testimony, science, faith, and how they interact, what's one thing you'd want to leave them with? I think really um, just be encouraged that there are answers. And, you know, keep studying, keep reading, keep an open mind and and just coming back to that kind of God reveals himself mm -hmm. faithfully both in nature as well as in scripture and we can faithfully interpret scripture uh, in light of creation and we can faithfully interpret creation in light of scripture and uh, get the best interpretation by looking at both books together. Well thanks Leslie I really appreciate it. You know, Leslie has a very fascinating story. I would encourage you to go to reasons.org, search for Leslie Wickman. You get lots of links to great resources about her, the work she does, that will equip you and just encourage you in your walk with God.